Hey fellow developers, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'd like to share some experiences on GitHub Actions. So recently, I have been working on a few videos about continuous integration and continuous delivery. So during the um, preparation for the videos, um, I have investigated a few um, CI CD servers. I think most of them are not very easy to use. And then I found GitHub Actions by accident. And it was surprisingly easy to follow the document, the guide, and make it work. So in this video, I'd like to share some of my findings uh, with you. So by the end of the video, you should be able to learn how to use the uh, GitHub Actions in your repo. So let's get started. So I have already got a front-end application. It's purely a UI. So if we uh, start the uh, application, it will return a code of the day. So basically, Mm, it will pick up a code from a list and then show it on the page. That's it. And the repo is very easy. It has only two components, the application and the codes. Uh, the application basically will pick up a random item from a list of codes, which is a JSON file. I basically ask ChatGPT to generate a list of random development related codes. And for the code component is simply uh, a Dave with uh, author name. It's a very simple application, but it has every um, elements we need to set up the build pipeline. If you haven't yet, check out the uh, previous videos about build script and the CI CD somewhere here. Here in our package.json, we have a few scripts defined. Uh, we have a build which will use the ES build to will transform and compile our application. Sorry, index.jsx into uh, into a bundle and the, the result will be put into a main.js and uh, because it's using the CSS so a CSS will be used uh, will be generated as well and the npm test will use the JS to run all the tests and the start will uh, use HTTP server to launch a HTTP server and use the dist as a web root so that's why you can see it here and there is a folder called dist it has an indexed HTML and it's using the main.js, which is compiled by the npm build script. So that's pretty much the repo. So if we um, run npm test, it will um, run the codes and the application.tsx and it's not passing. The repo is working perfectly fine in my local. I don't have a repo in a GitHub yet. So let's click the GitHub repo first. Uh, I will copy this name. So let's um, click a new repo uh, here. Click repo, uh, give it a repo name, and get an action demo. A project demonstrate GitHub Actions. It's a public repo, and let's click it. And uh, once we have it, uh, because it's a rep it's an existing repo already, so I will simply add this. Uh, remote and um, I can push now will be so I can then push so I have pushed and let's refresh the page and now you can see it's here and there is a tab here called actions if you click that um, because we don't have any actions yet um, we can either uh, you can like basically config one and um, using some of the predefined actions uh, but we were going to do that manually so you can understand how they link together and that's the link here set up your uh, workflow and you can basically define a workflow here and then commit the change and it will save that into your repo as a commit but we are not going to do that in the ui instead we will do that manually in a command line so before I do that, let's look at what is GitHub Actions. So GitHub Actions makes it easy to automate all your software workflow. Now uh, with the word class CSCD, build, test, and deploy your code uh, from GitHub. That is awesome. Uh, it allows you to define your workflow in your code base. GitHub will arrange all the infrastructure, like uh, the machine to run your build and run the test and do all this kind of stuff for you once you uh, make any changes on your code base. It is an event-driven 
uh, architecture. So it will listen all the changes happen to your code base. For example, a push request or PR review. And also it could be a timer or a third party request. All these events can trigger your workflow. So GitHub Actions workflow um, is triggered by an event uh, occurred in your repository. Um, and once that event occurred, it will trigger your predefined workflow. So there are some concepts here. A workflow is a um, predefined process and uh, um, it can contains many jobs and the jobs running inside a runner. So runner basically a virtual machine. It could be a Docker container or uh, a real machine maintained by GitHub. Um, and uh, for the jobs, each job can have multiple steps and each step can be a shell script or a predefined action. And all this together from the workflow. Mm, so there are a lot of other details, but we are not going to dive into that too much. So let's start with one simple uh, example first, and then we can gradually build up on top of it. So firstly, we need to define a directory called github slash workflow in our repository. So in the repo, I need to make a directory uh, called the github workflows. And uh, in that workflows, let's touch a file called um, build.yaml. So yaml is a configuration file for, for the workflow. I have already got a configure here. And let's talk about it line by line. So name is a place for you to uh, clearly explain what is happening here. And uh, in, on the on section, that means what kind of events are you listening? And the current configuration means whenever a, event, a push event happens on main branch, it will trigger these uh, following jobs. So obviously you can define uh, as many jobs as you like, um, but we, are, we, had, we only have one job, one job here called build. So our current job build has five steps. It's running on the uh, Linux instance. It's a uh, Ubuntu latest uh, version. And the first step we define here is GitHub action. It's predefined. A step can be defined as simple as a shell command, like this one, npm CI. It will install the uh, packages on the CI. And also you can use the predefined reusable action that is defined already for you because it's, it's, it's used frequently by other developers as well. So there is a checkout um, action. So the checkout action will check out the repo code into the runner. Uh, remember the runner is the virtual machine or Docker container. So it will check out all the code into that machine physically. And the second step is to set, set up the node environment. Because this is the React application, we're using node, we use ES build and jest. So we need node.js. And then we can specify uh, what version we would like. And after that step, we'll install all the dependencies, um, npm CI, and then we compile the, um, the file. And at the end of the job, we want to use the upload artifacts to archive this folder into a file called front-end assets. So this is our first uh, workflow. Whenever push event happen on the main branch, it will execute the jobs here. And then now let's try to push the commit because we are already in the main branch and let's add this and uh, let's try to uh, push that into uh, GitHub. So uh, introduced uh, GitHub, uh, GitHub actions and uh, let's push. So once it pushed um, in the repo here, let's have a look at the actions. Uh, so as you can see, it's already there is a workflow run here, and we'll click it. Um, you can see there is a, there is a job called build, and if you click that build, you can see all the details. Uh, we have defined all the uh, five steps, right? To so set up job, run the um, checkout, set up a node, compiling. Uh, once it's compiled, it will upload artifacts, um, and uh, it has a few other cleanups, but that's fine. We have it successfully built. And uh, if we go back to workflow here, 
you can see it's successfully uh, run. And if we go to the election again, you can see there is an artifact section beneath the build graph. And this front end assets. So you can click that to download. Um, let's download it to our local. So I will move that front end assets into a temporary folder and I will unzip it. And then we have the index.html, main.css, and main.js. So let's have a look at what they are. And we can use npx run AHP server, uh, the current folder, and then in uh, 881, localhost uh, 881, we should be able to see the uh, application just like we run in our local. And that's pretty much it. And there are many other features on the GitHub app actions. You can define uh, variables, security, and you can deploy that to, a, uh, to AWS or Azure or Cl uh, Google Cloud. It's a very powerful uh, workflow or automation. Let me know if you have any questions, please comment below. And if you want to watch more video like this, please give me a like and a sub subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching. I will see you in the next time.